AIM listed Cadence Minerals is a lithium investment company. The chief executive is Kiran Rosario, and he joins us now uh, with uh, some more details of what's been going on. I know that in the last year since we last spoke to you, there's been a little bit of a change of strategy. Explain what's going on. Yes, yeah, so uh, around uh, October last year, uh, when we paid back a chunk of our loan notes uh, that we, we, we had outstanding, we looked at how to deliver more value in terms of our share price. Now, although our investments had delivered really well, at the end of last year, they'd been up 125%, uh, sort of 40% uh, CGAR every year. Uh, that really hadn't reflected in, in, in the share price. So what we're looking to do, um, and particularly our unlisted assets uh, weren't uh, reflecting the share price. So what we're looking to do is, in effect, uh, uh, invest in private uh, companies where we uh, take a significant stake and those companies that are closer to cash flow um, and in particular uh, those ones that we can uh, take you know uh, have much more management say um, in how the direction and development of, of goes. I mean, we, we can add our experience of you know four or five well you know four or five years in this lithium sector, bringing the right off takers to the part to, to to these investments, and so we've started that process. Where we've done one with San Luis, and more recently we've had, we've uh, agreed or well it's a heads of terms subject to due diligence to invest in the Zulu project in in Zimbabwe. Well, let's take a look at that uh, that uh, news with uh, the Zulu project. Um, it's, it's owned, I think, by. Uh, Premier Af African Minerals, isn't it? So you're just taking a, a stake and an operating stake, is that in the, in the business? So we're taking a stake at the operating level. Right. So that the, the the idea is a very sort of traditional earning where we earn in. Uh, uh, on the basis of deliverables from the company. We have effectively two members on the technical committee out of uh, five of which the fifth is independently appointed. We have up to two members on the board of, of Zulu. So we're taking a much more active stake and involvement to ensure that this progresses as rapidly as possible to get that bankable feasibility uh, completed and crystallised value and crystallised value to us by that time we'd have 30% and then obviously look for construction and commissioning uh, following that and we would hope to add with our ability to market under the contract we have a 100% marketing rights with the with the, the, the product to be able to attract um, partners in to fund uh, that stage of uh, that stage of uh, production and construction so it's uh, very much more an active role than we previously had which would be more passive previously as a much more active role that we're going to take in the development of this asset and it's a it's a great asset um, we just have to look at adjacent assets which have uh, maybe more resource in, in there but they you know they've got double the valuation so we really feel that we can add a lot of value and the market then eventually appreciate that value which will translate hopefully into an increase in our share price of course premier african minerals has been around in the in the geographical area a long while how do you feel about going into zimbabwe a lot changed there of course in the last year or so yes and we've known about this asset obviously for a while uh, when we've been looking at it and and if you'd said to me a year ago are you interesting the, my uh, you know the political risk was too high and we wouldn't have done it uh, what we do understand is obviously premium African Minerals and its team have a great relationship on, uh, you know, despite all those political terminals, have retained uh, that uh, that asset and have a great relationship with the right people um, in, within the ministries and locally, importantly, uh, to develop that asset properly. So that's important to have that partner there. And I think we'll bring in that technical uh, strategic relationship part of the equation and direction of where they need to go and how to develop this. And they can complement that with their, uh, you know, strategic relationship in Zimbabwe and of course the change that's happened in Zimbabwe has also made us you know allowed us to invest there as well. Uh, you, uh, investment of course is, is the big word you paid what 5.1 million dollars I think is that right? So so we actually haven't it? paid that at we the moment because it's a, it's a heads of terms right, and, okay, and then we finished right. the due diligence and then uh, you, you know the project has to deliver mm. certain milestones so for yeah. example you know it needs to deliver uh, the drilling program then we pay our first tranche of right, okay. five tranches over the period of time and if at any point in time, you know, the project for whatever reason doesn't turn out to be as good as we thought, we, we don't have to commit ourselves uh, for the remaining remain of funding. So it, it, it's a, a, it, it's an asymmetric return on risk, right? So we have the potential upside there uh, that we that I highlighted beforehand with adjacent valuations. And if it doesn't turn out, we haven't committed all that capital. We've just committed maybe let's say one million or, or mm. two million dollars in, in that fact and, and of course then we have less percentages so it's an earning over a period of say around a year where we'd go up to 30 percent yeah uh, one of the assets we were talking about this time last year was the sonora mm -hmm. asset you own that i think through bacanora don't you is that or, or in 
Yes, we do. We have uh, roughly 8% of, uh, of Bacanora, uh, so we're a significant shareholder there, and we have a 30% uh, uh, equity stake in one of the joint ventures, which forms part of the mining plan, mm. plan. although, be it it's probably year seven, we've got 30% of that, that mine plan. Mm. Which and of course, Bacanora just has some good news recently, hasn't it, with the funding? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this was critical uh, for them and, you know... Uh, and for you as an investor. Uh, for them and for us as an investor, because that shows that there's market confidence in uh, in this asset that it was able to develop. I mean, they still have some more to raise, of course, because they're building their, their primary plants larger than $150 million worth of capex, but I'm sure they'll be able to meet it. It's got a great team, and I think given the dearth of financings within the lithium sector, it's a great stamp of approval for the management team and the project that this is getting financed um, mm. at you know, competitive rates. So you know, previous to this and the juniors, there was really only Namaska w which has got funded and they raised 800 million and that took a long time and I'm impressed that these guys have you know, done that in that period, they finished their bankable feasibility study, they're now doing their funding and you know, we can only look forward to you know, a, a period of activity of construction and then eventually commissioning. So it's really positive. It underpins our valuation and our understanding of where it needs to go. And it underpins, of course, the value then in our joint venture that we have there. Mm. Uh, um, of the other assets, if you look at your web page, you've got a number of assets, mm. a long list there. Um, of the others, pick out a couple more that you want to talk about, because I think uh, you are spread quite mm -hmm. widely. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, the original proposal was to be spread widely, diversify that risk, because risk in exploration is incredibly high, uh, and I do quote the statistics. I mean, you know, to find uh, a... Uh, it's, it was the statistics over like two, three thousand assets around the world in copper, gold, and all the rest of it. To go from a concept study of like we're looking for this type of asset to delivering an economic assessment of that, the probability of getting from A to B is like 0.03 percent. So, you know what we say is look, we've got a level of expertise and we understand these assets. And today. You know, specifically our Sonora, the EMH, um, and our other investments, well, specifically those two, which represent the majority of our portfolio, have delivered. You know, we looked at these when they were pre resource or just about a resource, and they've delivered. So we look at these junior ones, look at the technical risk, and try and remove that technical risk uh, in our portfolio by taking diversified and uh, spending a lot of time doing due diligence. You know, we spend up to 60 days and, and sometimes longer doing that. So. As, a, as for the other assets, we've got, of course, uh, European Metals Holdings, which, again, represents about 50 cent portfolio. It's an excellent asset. Um, there are currently some, you know, the Czech situation politically is, uh, is, uh, is uncertain in the sense they're trying to form a government. And uh, uh, so that, once that resolves, I think value will return to EMH and it can you know, full ste steam ahead with its back, uh, bankable feasibility study. I mean, it's the second or third largest hard rock deposit in the world, uh, and it's in Europe. And it's a strategic location for all the OEMs, Volkswagen and all the rest of it. It's a really important asset, I feel. Mm. Uh, you're also in Argentina, aren't you, as well? Yeah, so, San, San Luis. Yeah, so San, San Luis was a, a, uh, one of the first stages of investing. You know, that's, again, we, are allowed, we can get up to 100% of that mm. asset. But again, it's all about delivery. So you know, the licenses need to be granted, and then we'll fund. This is lithium as well. Yeah, it's all yeah, lithium. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, yeah. we're focused on lithium. Yeah. You know, everyone talks about the EV re electric re EV revolution, and we talk about cobalt and nickel. You know, the real possibilities of investing and getting those returns for us is in lithium because it's an opaque market. It's poorly understood. We've done the research, travelled to China, understand all the mm. supply and. Uh, supply S and D curves, and with nickel, I think that's going to be taken up anyway, and, and cobalt to a lesser extent. I think there are big players already but there. But lithium doesn't have. Um, this year has been it's been mixed news, I think, about lithium, hasn't it? How are you getting around that in terms of your messaging? Well, I you know I obviously completely disagree with that. I mean, uh, Morgan Stanley in, in particular put out a, right. you know, a, a piece which was uh, relatively negative, um, and that really caused a sell-off in, in a, a lot of uh, lithium stocks. Uh, and, but when you looked at that model and you then go onto the ground and look at where capacity is and where the, where the lead time is for all these assets, and in particular financing, mm -hmm. um, those production levels uh, will, not be, will not be met. I think we're going to be constrained on lithium because uh, you know, even you look at the big companies like Albemarle and their La Negra deposit, it's been in construction for a long time and they're having problems commissioning. So even the big guys have been doing this a long time, have issues. So it's going to be the proverbial, it will, it will come, it will be delayed and it will be more expensive. So I think uh, that Morgan Stanley uh, uh, 
piece, if you took their optimistic side on consumption um, and their pessimistic side on uh, s s supply, that probably matches where I where I am. Um, and uh, although I now feel, uh, you know, one of the things that's critical I mentioned about financing, just because financing some of these projects which are ready to go, just because financing hasn't been forthcoming, we've only seen Namaska, we're now seeing Bacanora getting funding, the time delay between financing and delivery of battery grade material means that we'll probably have a delay in uptake of consumption of, of the electric vehicle, but that shouldn't affect the lithium price because ultimately there will be an, a, a pent up demand. Because I certainly believe that you know, we'll be sitting here in 2025 and theoretically there could be a 25% penetration rate of ele electric vehicles, but people coming to buy their car on lease will sit there and go, you know, you have to wait two years for electric vehicle. They'll buy an uh, internal combustion engine or a mix of internal combustion electric vehicle. And so that demand being pent up will take three years to come through, yeah. I think. So what's the messaging then to, from, from your, uh, you for shareholders mm. in, in, in Cadence? Because, uh, I mean, the, the share price has come under pressure recently, mm. had a little bit of an uplift uh, proportionally because of the deals uh, in Zimbabwe and also back in Oro, of course, has been good news. Um, but what's your message to shareholders about the future and where you're going and your investments and the returns? So we've had say up to the end of last year we had about a return of 125% on our, on our investments. So what we need to do is... Um, so do you pay that back to, to shareholders then? How, how, how is that represented then? I mean, the share price doesn't represent that sort of improvement in your... No, uh, and I think there was a, a valuation gap um, and maybe through a bit of speculation where we right. had assets around five and had a market capitalization much larger than that. Right. And then it, 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 the market cap has come down and the, uh, the valuation of our assets has improved. So we've now met at this period where we're, we're probably, we've got a capitalization of, of around 16, 17 million. The underlying, va underlying value of our publicly listed and our unlisted yeah. is in the region of 24. So we, yes, we are still undervalued. Uh, then of course those assets are, if we retain them, assuming that there's dilution, are probably worth another, or in total about $150 million. But our view is, is that, uh, you know, where our expertise lies is absolutely identifying these early stage as assets bringing them uh, and in going forward bringing them to fruition along with the management team so what we want to do is um, take uh, you know take those returns that we've made reinvest them and do that yeah. again if we can and type of a private equity type approach to our yeah. management style so if we can try to achieve 40 to 50 percent per annum our compound annual growth rate every year from this next set of investments well that's great I mean those sort of returns on a consistent basis uh, mean we should in see an increase in our in our share price. Of course, if there's speculation about you know deals or anything like that, or something like you know something amazing comes out, then we would see we would see yeah. sort of those the huge volatility and massive increases. Yeah. But the idea that's our minimum target that we want to achieve in yeah. our, which is what we've achieved to date over the last four years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks indeed for your time. Thank Sorry. you, Jeremy. It's, it's a great pleasure to have you back in the studio. It's uh, Kieran Mazzaria. He's the chief executive of Cadence Minerals. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.